Well, we knew all about Paul Westfall as a, as a great college player over at USC. Uh, he was highly thought of. He had great athletic ability. Well, of course, we have to go back when he joined the Suns coming from Boston before the start of the 1975 season. When Paul became available for Charlie Scott, we jumped at that. Over the next five years, he was as dominant a player as anyone in the, in the NBA. Paul and I clicked right off the bat. We just ran beside each other down the court and passed and shot and scored. We roomed together the whole year and he taught me a lot of things, how to, how to hold a jersey, because he learned that from, from John Havlicek, of course. He taught me the best places to eat in the road and we were two of the many vital keys to that successful season. And Paul, um, just really athletic, could really score. Uh, one of the first guys that I really remember using his offhand so well. We all remember that he made the call, called the illegal timeout that set up the opportunity for Gar Hurd to hit the shot heard around the world. Here's Perry to Gar Hurd. Here's the jump shot. Good! You know, you have to be so quick on your feet to come up with, with things like that moment. That is probably as, as good a decision as you'll find ever in the history of the NBA. It's been, at both times that we've been to the finals, he's been a part of the team, uh, either as a player or as a coach. But in looking at our personnel um, at the time, and looking at the training that Paul had had under Cotton Fitzsimmons, I mean, he was a logical, natural guy to step in. Obviously, he coached me, but he's been a great friend. Uh, he treated me so well when I came here. You know, that team that we had was a special team in 92, 93, and he was the perfect coach to, to coach that team because he really understood personalities and with his offensive mind, uh, gave us all the freedom to be the best we could be. When I came here, I was on a lot of pressure. It was very stressful because we had to either get to the finals or not. And from day one, he treated me amazing. So we're down 0-2, and I know the next question is, are you guys dead? No, we're going to win the series. With this guarantee, that took a lot of guts, man. And so being down 0-2, you are really in the box. When Paul made that statement, it's exactly what our team needed to hear. Well, it was great because he, he literally, for as much as he could, took the pressure off us. We're going to win one Tuesday, and the next game's Thursday, we'll win there. Then we'll come back and we'll win the series on Sunday. And everybody will say what a great series it was. I remember a coach making that declaration. And um, those are the kinds of guys that I look up to. He was not hesitant at all to say how he felt and how he felt his team was going to do. And I think we could say he hit the nail on the head. I think you can put this one in the deep freeze. It's in the ice box. Yeah, it's over. The Lakers know it's over. I just had this, this belief that somehow, some way, we're going to win. And those guys backed it up. This Naismith Hall of Fame, it's, it's for the iconic figures, you know, Wilt, Elgin, Russell, Jordan, Charles Barkley, people like them who often seem bigger than life. And now it's for me too. And it's such a great honor and a pleasure if somebody said, hey, stand on stage to me and bring me into the Hall of Fame. It meant a great deal to me, and, and I love the guy. Having all that, that love and caring and people reaching out to you and having laughter and sharing stories makes all the difference in the world. I think it was therapeutic for me. It's a tough situation, but when I went in there, uh, I was just amazed at how Paul was so positive and um, the things he's taken out of this. It, it really set me straight because I walked in there kind of 
you know, iffy, feeling bad and everything. When I sat and talked to him, uh, his attitude and his, how positive he was really uh, made me feel better. When I flew out here to spend some time with him and just tell him how much I love him, appreciate him, and respect him, uh, it's amazing uh, what he's done for me as a friendship. And when I heard those stories about Coach Westfall, I felt a uh, kindred spirit um, because of our backgrounds, because of who uh, he is and what he's meant to this organization and to the league. And then you meet Cindy and you're like, okay, this is a family that you know, I just want to be around and support and help any way I can. You know, when you leave here, you know, you can't take anything with you. There's no U-Haul behind the earth. It's what you leave. And I think it's your character, how you treat people, uh, how you go about your work. Uh, it's what really defines you as a person. And that's what Paul has done. As I think about him, as a person, as a player, um, he was a very special guy. Um, a great family man, a great husband, blessed with great talent, and he utilized that talent and had a career. He had a career doing the things that he loved doing. He loved the game. I'm sure when, when it's all said and done for him, as it will be for each and every one of us, um, the Lord's going to tell him a job well done. Thank you.